Hello there, Net Neighbor. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating um, continents or large overland areas, uh, maps using just GIMP, which is a free graphics program. It's kind of like Adobe Photoshop, but I'm a penniless popper, so I use GIMP. Once you've downloaded it, you want to start. Choose a width of 1200 and a height of 960. That's a pretty large size for at the very least, do this when you start out, just so it's simpler, and it takes less time. Larger maps can take longer to render, especially on older computers like I have. You want to make sure it's at 300 pixels resolution, DPI or whatever, and then just click OK. OK, so the first thing you want to do, you want to go to Filters, Render, Clouds, and at the bottom over here, Solid Noise. And you see, it gives you a little preview of what it will look like. Now, there's a detail field which you can change it and it will change this preview up here it gets much smoother and more blurry when you go to one two is a little better three is a little grainier four I usually go with five because it provides a lot of texture which is important for some steps later on uh, you can take randomize off and then put it back on and it will change what the, your preview is uh, generally I want to go for a preview that has a lot of dark shapes but isn't uh, cluttered with them so there's too many. Basically you want fewer but larger dark shapes in this haze that it produces. The way that you do that is you by moving this X and Y button here. If I bring these down to three you see I've got a little more body here. Larger amounts of body. There's still some dark in the other areas, but I kind of like this because this will produce larger, denser areas. And this is actually what you want. Uh, if you click Turbulent, it kind of hacks everything up or stutters it, which isn't bad. It, it depends on what you're going for. To start off with, I'm just going to go with as basic as I can. And I'm going to re-randomize a couple of times. Well, there's kind of a triangle. Uh, it's not... That's pretty good there. I like that. There's a few dark ones. Those of these dark things are going to become the car continents, or if you're doing things on a smaller scale, I guess they could be the different islands. Basically, the higher you put these numbers here, the X and Y, the more islands you'll have. The lower this is, the more you're likely to have larger continents, basically, when we get finished. I'm sure that's not what it was designed for, but that's how we'll use it. So I'm going to click OK here, and it's going to fill this blue with... Uh, whatever this the dark color is and see it's just sort of a gray here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, fuzzy select tool or magic wand and it's already selected and I'm going to go down here to uh, I'm going to take feather edges off well I don't know that doesn't matter it's not that important but I'm going to bring the threshold up to about 12. And I'm going to see what that will do for me. Because I'm going to go right over here and just start selecting. Let me move this here. And I select that. See, it selects a, an area of the static of this haze here. And I'll hold down Shift and I'll click on another one. And another one. See how these look like continents, land masses? And it doesn't have to be the dark, but that's what I'm doing because it's easiest. And if you're really close to another one, you can usually merge them. And that's too much, so I'm going to hit Control z and undo that last bit. And you can also go with the light ones. So there's a bunch of continents, if I wanted them, like that. See, I just turned that one into one continent, even though it was two or three different selected things. If you select things in between them, it will sort of average out and, and decide to select everything next to it. So that's kind of good. I can probably turn this into a continent if I click this white area. No, that, not even what I was thinking. Okay, well that's pretty good there. I think I may go with this. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, okay. So there's my continents I'm going to use. Now what I do is... I'm going to go up here, I'm going to select, and then invert, which means instead of the continents here that I've got selected, 
I'm going to select all the rest of this, which is going to be the ocean. And I just hit delete. And now everything's white in the ocean, which I can change to blue if I want to, but I'll do that later. Now I'm going to go back up here and re-invert, uh, and now I have the continent selected again. Now what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go up here to Colorize. I'm going to go to Colors and Colorize. And it starts me off with a blue-green, but I want green. So I'm going to go to about 120. That's a really vivid green. And I'm going to OK that. So now I've got my some of my land masses. Now, there's different things I could do. I could uh, do something called uh, embossing, which will actually turn all these things gray. And you can adjust this to change the height and the, uh, the, the detail, amount of detail. But I kind of like these. Although I do like the outside embossing, I kind of like the, the way these look, the way they are right now. Plus, I'd have to recolor it. So, for right now, I'm just going to go with this, the way they are. Uh, I could bevel it, which will... I'll show you what that does. I uh, go to Decor and add Bevel. And this actually starts up with work on copy, and I don't want to do that because it creates a new image and works on it. I'm just going to do this. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it at 5 so you can see what the default is. And if I unselect everything, you can see that it adds a little edge to everything, but it's, it's part of the white, and that's not really what I'm wanting. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to undo Add Bevel, and whoop. I redo Colorize, and I've still got my continent selected here. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go over here. Whoops, that was not what I was trying to do at all. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the Layers menu and I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it, that was from an earlier thing I was doing. I'm going to call this one Mountains. And it's also going to be 1200 by 960. And it, notice that it sits on top of the background. I can change, uh, I can change the order these are in. But right now, I'm just going to do mountains on top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect what I've got. Now I'm going to take the, I'm going to take my fuzzy select tool again, and I'm going to leave it at about 12, and I'm going to see. If I can select a few things, well, that's getting really more than I wanted. Okay, so since I know that gets more than I wanted, let's go to 6 over here. That just selects parts of what I'm looking for here. So I'll select some of these large areas, the darker uh, somewhat larger areas, whip too much, and I'll show you what this can do. I'm using this to create what's going to be my mountain ranges on these you know, islands or continents. All right, so I've got that done. Now these I do want to emboss, so I will do that first. I'll go back up here to filters, distorts, and emboss. You'll notice I've got mountains selected, this layer. I need to have the background selected, actually, because I can't emboss nothing. See, if I turn off the background, there's not actually anything on this top level. So I need to have background selected. Now I emboss like a boss. And now see the, uh, the example. puts a few, uh, few detailed things in here, and I can change basically elevation and depth and a lot of things, and it'll change what direction you're looking at it from. I'm just going to go with the random there. That's going to take a little bit, and it's going to turn all these things into embossed areas.
And the great thing about this is, is now that I've done this, I can go back up to colorize and go to about 40, which will turn all these a sandy brown. Now that's not bad. Let me unselect and see what they look like. Kind of odd looking, so let me undo my unselect so everything's selected again. And I'm going to go up to blur and Gaussian blur. Now, as you can see, if I go with the six that I've got it on, it will blur everything. I could go to 12. I may go with four. That look kind of gives it a, a false uh, topographical aspect. So let me do that and we'll see what it looks like. Let me unselect here. That's not bad. I think I may keep that. So, right there, you can see, is my map so far, which is not bad, actually. Now, I can go back through, probably taking my fuzzy select tool down a bit from 6 to maybe 4. I could probably leave it at six, but we go down to about four. Well, let me go to three. Now let's go through some of these things again. See there, it's selected. I don't. What I'm wanting here now, I'm actually not wanting uh, large areas. I'm not wanting contiguous areas. I'm wanting streams. I'm, I'm trying to use this to make rivers, and it's not really. It's not cooperating with me on that one. Uh, this may still be too high, so let me take this down some more. I went with 1.5, and it's giving me a few, giving me a few things in there. Rivers go north to south, so I really want something going up and down. But sometimes you just there's not a whole lot of help for it. That's now. See that looks kind of river-like, so I'm going to keep that. No, no, no. Let's see what, no. Let's see what I can get over here. That's not bad. There's like a little pool, I guess. That's too much. That's too much. And if you played with the with darkening things up, that would also change what the magic one fuzzy select tool will select. So there's a lot of ways you could go about this. For the purpose of this, I'll just I'll just select some of these. Just so you can get in, just so there's an example of what can be done. Boy, that one is just not wanting to cooperate at all. There. Good enough. Okay. So now I've got those selected. I want to simply hit delete to clear those and turn them white. So now, let me unselect everything so you can see it better without the marching ants, as they call it. Now you can see I've got a bunch of blank lines on some of my continents, which will serve as my rivers. Now I make those by going up to this, going to select, by color, and I click on the white, and that will select everything white and within this 60% threshold, which is everything that's white and really close off white. As you can see, it won't select some of the dimmer whites or grays or blue greens but that's all right I don't really want those selected so I've selected my color now I go up to edit and then fill with foreground color which I've already got set as blue and now you'll see what that's going to do and I can look right here and say okay that looks good I like the way this looks and I'll unselect everything and now my map looks like this which is not bad. Now the only thing that really I need to do here is I can go up to my my paint I went to my paintbrush here and it's set on size seven. I'll probably set it to about well, we'll see. Well that's a little large, but I'll show you for an example since it's easiest to do that. See, as I said before, rivers go north and south, and money come from 
uh, the mountains because that's where the rainwater collects and things like that. So you could do that. Basically, this was this is the this is the artistic part where you spend a little time uh, deciding where your rivers are coming from and where they're going, where they empty back into the sea and into other rivers. And a lot of them suggest themselves. Pretty much these these areas here that already have blue in them, it makes sense that they would empty back into the sea. So you can just clear some of that out yourself. And that's essentially all there is to this. Uh, it's not perfect, but if you just need a random map, if you just need a new unique map, you can make these really simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, there's a lot of other things you could do. You could go through and put. Uh, you could go to the brushes, which is on here right now, and I could choose to put uh, a city. Oh, let me let me raise it. I could put a city somewhere by putting a little star, and I could use the text tool to put a, a title of it, like Jick Jick, the city of whatever, and I could decide this is one continent, and and you can of course use your paintbrush tool, or you could try to do more of the uh, fuzzy select tools and make roads. It really depends on what you want to do, but this is really all there is to it, to making a, an overland map. And you can also use this to make cops of trees. And this, instead of blue for water, you could have this be desert or dirt, or you could have this be lighter green for shorter grass, and you could make forests instead of doing water. You, there's just a, it's really up to your imagination how creative you are. And how you can, how well you think outside the box to change things into other things, and to uh, approximate other ideas using these same techniques. And I got most of this from the Cartographers Guild, which is a great website for people making their own maps. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it's useful. See you next time.